Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Mac Movie Reviews Podcast. I'm your host, Mac, joined here once again by my co-host, Christian Celeberto, also known as Miss Flamingo. Say hi to the folks at home, Christian. Hi, everybody. So we are joined here by another special guest. We are just getting a lot of these guests guests on this podcast. We're like becoming like the Larry King show of podcasts, but you may know him as the 4K Godfather on Instagram. Give it up for Big Knack 007, also known as Robert Makes the Cut. How you doing, Robert? Welcome to the show. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for that awesome intro. Thank you for having me, uh, Mac and Kristen, on the show, and uh, it's a pleasure. Of course, we were excited uh, to get you on because we have been looking to get somebody who collects Blu-rays extensively like you do. Yeah. And uh, we're very interested to talk about some of our blockbuster days, some movies that we collect, what kind of Blu-rays you collect, what kind of movie films Mac collects and I collect, and, you know, some uh, good old-fashioned old, you know, physical media. So, Rob, for the people at home... Tell us, tell for the people who may not know who you are, tell them about yourself. Well, for me, I uh, I fell in love with cinema probably when I was about ten years old. Um, I went to see Star Wars for the first time with my cousin, and it seems like after that, after that, I just fell in love with cinema, and um, also, also just fell in love with collecting as well. I've been probably collecting for over. Uh, Oh, well over 10 years. Wow. Wow. So, uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, what, um, exactly do you collect? So you collect 4Ks, Blu-rays, DVDs, and all that? I think mostly 4Ks and Blu-rays at this time. It's very, very few DVDs. So do you have anything on your Instagram that people should check out? Because it'll be in the link in the description below. Oh, yeah. I'm just starting to, uh, make some content on that I, I i do believe my collection on my instagram so it's at big knock 007 um, um more uh physical related and and movie related stories to come on that one yeah his link will be in the description below he has a big collection we met rob on our um mission impossible watch along we did with david uh for rogue nation and he showed off we saw like his back wall and it's just full of movies and even yeah. like we did Scarface watch along with David last night. He has this cool little like the world is your statue. So my man's got a nice little collection of everything. <laughs> yeah. So um, on today's show, we're going to be, uh, of course, going over some film news and entertainment news. Then we're going to be getting into a, um, a film. We're going to be reviewing a film that our guest Rob picked that we should be reviewing a special guest pick review. So something new there then we're going to be getting into the topic of physical media and our experience with it and a little bit of rob what his experience with what collecting is and we're going to be getting into the questions to wrap up the show so are you guys ready to get started let's oh, do yeah, it great. All right, so starting off the news today, we have some tragic news of last night. Um, Black Panther actor Chadwick Boseman passed away at the age of 43 after a four-year battle with colon cancer. Um, he was It was announced on his uh, Twitter page by his uh, family and um, just very sad stuff. Uh, I've, Rob, 
was on the watch along with uh, David Flix talk last night, and he was like, "You hear the news with Chadwick?" And we all looked it up, and you said that we saw that he passed away. Sad stuff. Yeah, it's very very surprising. I don't think anybody was expecting that, and no. knowing the fact that he had colon cancer and he powered through so many movies during this time. Oh yeah, and you know he put up a battle which you couldn't even tell. Mm. You could not tell. Yeah. And, you know, knowing that he leaves behind, you know, his wife yeah. it, and his entire career, I mean, it's very sad. So yeah. I was actually in the middle. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't participate in uh, David's watch along because uh, it was my mom's birthday yesterday. And we uh, oh, actually uh, we actually watched uh, the film. Uh, this is the year. It mm -hmm. was the Selena Gomez and David Henry event that they put on to. Uh, you know, celebrate David's uh, newest coming of age film. And yeah. once the movie ended, I went on my uh, Facebook and because I was like, I just felt like I had to check my Facebook for a minute. And the first thing that popped out was Chad Bozeman. Yeah. And then I get a text from one, a couple of my other film friends. They're saying Black Panther dot. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. And then I started looking like on the actual Internet and I was like, wow, he's really gone. Yeah. Like this didn't feel it doesn't sound right, like, knowing, saying that, like, Black Panther is dead. Like, I thought it was, like, that Jackie Chan thing that happened mm -hmm. where, you know, we heard about he passed away and it was just all, like, an internet, you know? Yeah, the inter hoax. like a fake internet, like, hoax. And right? that's what I thought this was. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't sound right, like, to me, like, he was Jackie Brown. He was uh, Jackie Robinson. Me, Jackie and Robinson. Yeah, he was Jackie Robinson, but James Brown. Yeah, James Brown, James Brown. And uh, and of course, yeah, everybody knows him as Black Panther. It's it's amazing to see that like his career was he had a nice career, but it was cut way too short. Definitely. Yeah, way so, too short. Um, my question is for you guys: Is what was your first Chadwick Boseman uh, experience, either in film or did you guys see his film in theaters when he was just starting out in the mid two thousands? I think my first experience with with Bozeman for me was probably when he was in uh, in Marshall. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't get to see that. I wanted to yeah. see that, and I believe Dan, I believe Dan Stevens was in that film, if I'm not wrong. And yeah, I, I so, saw because yeah. I saw him take to uh, his Instagram and share his uh, deepest remarks. Yeah, he was. I just actually double checked, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my uh, was Marshall. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Oh, you seen it too? Yeah, me and my mom watched it. He played a lot of um. That's like one of the things I liked about Chadwick is that like he took on. It was kind of like a a good. It was like kind of a running kind of like thing on the internet was like he was going to play every single notable black figure in history, and it was kind of cool. Because like to answer your question, mm -hmm. my first experience was forty two, which I think is my favorite role he's done because. I think Jackie Ro Jackie Robinson is one of my uh, greatest role models and like heroes of all time mm -hmm. when I was growing up, and yeah. finally seeing him get a movie and Chadwick playing him so well, and then the Dodgers they actually like honored Chadwick on their Instagram and Twitter. I was just like, man, I was like, that's I just love I love Forty Two. Like I think that's like my favorite performance of his. And did you see Forty Two in theaters or no? Uh, I got free tickets from it from the radio. I guessed the actors, oh, cool. right? They're like, name two actors. I said, I think I said, I said Chadwick Boseman and I said Harrison Ford, but they counted it anyway. Cause I was like 13 at the time. But I was like, okay, not close enough. Here you go. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I yeah. love when radio shows do that. They don't do that as much anymore. <laughs> How about you, Christian? What's your, what was your first, uh, film you saw him in? Well, I first saw him in Civil War. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I was late to the Chadwick Boseman game. I haven't seen, excuse me, 42 or uh, Get On Up or, you know, amazingly, he was in Gods of Egypt. And yeah. uh, I didn't see that. I haven't it was seen not Marshall, good. But or his late or the uh, film that he was in last year, The 21 Bridges, which I just. That was of, entertaining. Yeah, I heard cool. it was like a mixed bag from a lot of people. And uh, but I did see uh uh, a little bit of Dad Bloods Five, and uh, but I liked him in that, so I am kind of like surprised because, like, even though his career was so short, it makes me want to go back and watch those yeah. movies that were mentioned. 
Mm -hmm. So. Well, he is. Um, the last movie he was working on was a Ma Rainey <laughs> film with Viola Davis. It's going to come out on Netflix, and they just announced that they're pushing that back to work on it a little bit. But that begs the question, and like this is the last thing we'll talk about with it, is that what's going to happen? I know it's like the first thing that came to a lot of people's mind is like, what's going to happen with Black Panther two? Because you know. He's the only person that you can see as T'Challa and Black Panther, and it's like Black Panther's two scheduled for 2022. And what's going to happen with the sequel? Will you write him off? Will you kill off the character? Will you try to make a new generation type of thing? Like, how will you play this into the sequel? That well, at least if they started filming it, I don't think they did. I, oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, the either idea solution is to write about. Suri, yeah, and make her like a female Black Panther, which would be like an okay thing, you know. Suri is like you know good with the technology and everything, but mm -hmm. what uh, the girl who played, I think it was Lupita, uh, not Lu either Lupita or the the other girl who had like this double sword. What's her name? Ao. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about because she plays yeah. the show on The Walking Dead, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, um, Okoye, right? Her I think so. Yeah. Yeah, like she was the one who like a lot assisted him a lot, and mm -hmm. I think she could like maybe step up, and they could either write her maybe a solo film like really quickly, or unless my other theory is maybe Marvel knew about this and maybe announced to fans that an idea of hope that there would be a Black Panther too. That's true, because it did, he, it said he had a four-year battle with it, so maybe when they announced him in 2016 as Black Panther, they had backup plans just in case if the worst-case scenario, like, happened, which is, Yeah, know, which so they case. kept it, like, in the back of their pockets to keep fans happy, but, you know, maybe it was, it, this idea of Black Panther 2 was never gonna happen. I mean, it could, but it, I don't think it'll be titled Black Panther 2, it's obviously gonna be gonna something be else. Hire something else of a new story, probably from T'Challa's family, if that yeah, even. So, ugh. but uh, Marvel's got to deal with this, and because he's also in What If, he's both voicing, you know, the uh, what, his character that in that too. So I guess they're gonna work whatever they have for that too. Yeah, or or recast him. Yeah, recast but I don't think it, people want to. I don't think people would be happy. It would be like it just want to be the same, you know? Yeah. It's not like one of those things where, like, it was like the Cuba Ju Gooding Jr. thing, you know, where they just replaced him with uh, Don Cheadle. It's not like one of those things. You mean Terrence Howard? Terrence Howard. Oh, <laughs> oh <my>. God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, wow, Christian. But, um, I rest in power. My God, it's Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, my God. Well, rest in power, Chadwick. You will be missed, my man. A war is coming. My son, it is your time. Confrontation ain't nothing new to me. The Black Panther lives. You can bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. The world's gonna start over. This is my time. This ends today. You your false confidence and calculated promises. Sign in your conversation. Black Panther. Ready PG-13. Get tickets now. But um, in other news, um, Scream 5, it got pushed back, you guys. It was supposed to come out next year, 2021, but it got pushed back to 2022. So um, I want to ask you both, what's your experience with Scream? Are you guys excited for Scream 5 after oh, Wes yes. Craven has pissed, pissed away? Passed away? Like, pissed away! <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's, it's been, how, he passed away in 2015, so it's going to be how many years when they released this movie since he passed away? 2015 and 2022? Oh, seven. Like, seven years. Seven years. And they've gotten Courtney Cox back, they got David Arquette back, but Niv Campbell has been quiet so far. Uh, reportedly, like, I even saw something that Selena Gomez, like, this couldn't be, like, something was attached to it or something oh, like God. that. They started, don't get me started on Selena Gomez, she's my queen, I love her. So, um, but yeah, uh, they're following, they're both started following, uh, Courtney Cox and, uh, David Arquette started following Selena Gomez, and it was like, oh, are they gonna, you know, is she gonna be like attached to the new Scream movie? So, I mean, like, I don't know if she is, but 
I'm a big horror fan. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, especially the first one. It plays a very near, dear role in my heart. It's one of the first films I ever saw. Even though I wasn't crazy about the fourth film, I still find joy in the fourth film. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the new se- with this whole new story. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really disappointed they pushed it back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's time for another, uh, we experience another scream, I think. It's been a little while. Um, it's good to see the cast back. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just, uh, it's been time and, uh, well, let's hope it's going to be good. And, uh, they have, a, they have a, another whole year to, to develop it and everything. So I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and they got the, the, the two guys who did, uh, the film ready or not actually. Oh I yeah. Think. Uh, radio silence. Yeah. Oh, so, I know that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. How do you guys rank yeah. the screen, screen movies? Because people will say that the fourth one's the worst one, but I totally disagree. I think the third. No, one's I the disagree. Worst. Yeah, third. The third is the worst. I did not like the third. The third was a huge like slap in the face to me as a Scream yeah. fan. I actually, I there's a lot of enjoyable aspects, especially in four. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I would rank the first one, the second one, the fourth, and then the third. Exactly. Yeah, the fourth one was really good. Yeah, there's a lot of hate over it for some reason. Yeah. Uh, who knows? How would you rank it, Rob? Like first, second, third, fourth, yeah, first, whatever. second, third. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How would you rank it, Mac? Uh, uh for, Oh, yeah. go ahead, Rob. Um, I'm sorry. First, second, fourth, then the last one, third. Okay. <laughs> I would rank it. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> one, four, two, three. Yeah. Oh, okay. So cool. <laughs> um, so in other news, are you guys excited for the new mutants, which was released in theaters on this past Friday, a, or yesterday as we're recording? Yeah, uh, that <laughs> I, you know, I just say that poor movie. I just. Did you guys know it opened in the Rotten Tomatoes with a twenty six percent? Now I think it's at like a twenty one or something. No, it's twenty six percent as I'm looking at uh, it right now. At 31 reviews. Maybe critics got nice. Uh, and uh, it's at a 52% audience score. And the critic consensus says, rendering a list of potentially explosive ingredients mostly inert, the New Mutants is a franchise spinoff that less, that's less than the sum of its super-powered parts. Oh, boy. Uh, I just kind of <laughs> don't care that it's out now. Oh. Like, like, it's playing in drive-ins, which is good. Unlike Tenant. But, uh... Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe seeing it at the drive-in because still where I am, theaters are still not open yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can't see Tenant. I mean, are they starting to open up where you are now, uh, Mac and Rob? Oh, uh, no. They are no. over, but it's not in my state. It's in Connecticut. Okay. We don't, we don't have any drive-ins in Massachusetts. But even like uh, to see like actual like films? No. No, still not you. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, so we're yeah right now we're the only podcast that's not going to be able to see Tenet <laughs> for a while or new mutants. Uh, so, no. uh, I mean, unless we have other ways of getting it, but we're not going to say it on the podcast. Yeah, we're gonna, I, I like to do it the right professional way. Give the mo- people their money, the hard work, or find the streaming service. You know, a lot, a lot of folks are going to. Especially us in California, we're you either uh, have if you want to see New Mutants, uh, go to, uh, go to the drive-in or um, or go to uh, Vegas. Some people are driving out to Vegas to go see. Wow, it. really? It's about almost yeah, almost four and a half was about four hour drive for us here. Yeah, wow. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I, Worth I it. See it, but uh, I'm we're just gonna have to wait. <laughs> wait for VOD or Disney Plus. That's what I might do at this point. I just might wait to see it on Disney+. Plus. The new mutants are dangerous. This place takes your greatest fear and makes you live through it. That'll help a kid sleep. Rated PG-13. Get tickets now. In other news, another movie got pushed back. Did you guys know that they were making another Paranormal Activity movie? No, I thought that oh. ended already. No, they they nope, it's gonna come out. It was supposed to come out 
supposed to come up March 19th, 2021, but now it's uh, moved to March 4th, 2022. So uh, what's your guys' experience with Paranormal Activity? Because with me, I always thought that it was a flash in the pan because uh, the only good movies were one through four. Everything else can just go away. I thought only one was good. What? I didn't even see the rest. I, I like one through four, and I kind of like the, um, uh, the marked ones a little bit. Really? Yeah, I kind of like that one. <laughs> that one was so dumb to me. I was like, really? Superpowers? Okay. That's yeah. believable. They wanted to bank in on mu- New Mutants early. No, and then the sixth yeah. one, the sixth one, the Ghost Dimension tried to tie it all together. Because, like, the ending was like, they went through a portal and it went into, like, the first, back to the first movie. And, um, really? Yeah. And it was like, the end. You, so, you know, the ending of the first movie when, like, he hears the, his girlfriend scream and like he goes downstairs. Mm-hmm. It's because she saw a character from the sixth movie in the kitchen. So that's what it tied it all together. Oh my oh. god! It's I've so heard yeah. yeah. I tried to get the actress who played um in the first movie on the podcast. I didn't hear anything back. Ah! Oh no! That's just her on Twitter. I didn't hear anything. That's something. That's okay. We tried. Before we move on, I did find out some Nick Cage news. Yes, Nicolas Cage. I saw what you sent me. Say it. Tell me! I, yes, I, I think it's... Yeah. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, How to get burned? How to get burned? I don't know! Okay, so it's being reported by Deadline that Nicolas Cage is to voice the title character in EP fantasy thriller series High Fire based on the books and works at Amazon. And yeah. In the article, it states... Amazon has put in development High Fire, a TV series based on the adult thriller novel by the best-selling author Artemis Fowl. <laughs> oh, boy. Awesome. Author Elon Colfer with Nicolas Cage voicing the lead character and executive producing. Do you think Elon Colfer is just like, do you think he has like, do you think he's sad? Did he watch the Artemis Fowl movie and he just like contemplated just crying in a corner? He's like, I gotta make my money back. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Rob, did you watch Artemis Fowl? I haven't had the pleasure for that one yet. Uh, <laughs> Me and Chris. Had... I, heard about, I heard about it. It's bad. It's really bad. It's really... Yeah, if you really want to enjoy a really bad time, just... Watch Artemis Fowl. Like... Yeah. Oh, it's 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 not good. And but Nick Nicholas... wasn't cheap to make, I don't think, right? They, they no. They, I no. think it was like... A hundred million dollars, I think, at least. I think. Let me check Ooh, real quick. Gosh, ouch. Artemis Fowl, because it took some time to make. I know that for a fact, because they yeah. one hundred twenty-five million dollars took to make that movie. Oh my goodness! And knowing it just faced so much backlash, you know, it just and it should. It's not good at all. They tried to work with what they had, but dang, <laughs> it's is it not good? But what it sounds like from this film, it looks like it's going to be dragons. Oh, yes. Nicolas Cage and dragons. Didn't we have a Nicolas Cage movie with dragons? It was called, like, Season of the Witch. Yeah. Something like that. And I forgot. There was, like, some blonde-haired actor, I think, in it. Hmm. Who was it? I can't remember. You just narrowed down a lot of girls in Hollywood. (laughs) No, it was, like, not an actor, but it was, like, not, like, a female, but it was, like, a a man. Oh, okay. (laughs) But, But, Rob. Do you like Nicolas Cage? Because he seems to come up a lot in this podcast. He's like our running joke. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, late, lately, um, I, I like the old Nicolas Cage, but I, I don't think we're going to see that for a while. Like, uh, maybe, <laughs> like in The Rock or, or mm-hmm. Face Off. Yeah, but, um, you know, I don't mind him. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. He's, he's trying to hustle. So. But uh, another, a lot of pushback. From especially from Paramount, uh, is that G.I. Joe, the spinoff movie Snake Eyes, has been pushed back to October 2021, and it was originally supposed to come out this year in October. So, no Snake Eyes movie this year, guys. Uh, if anybody was looking forward to it, that's a heads up. I mean, I <laughs> forgot it was coming out. Everyone didn't did. Didn't we talk about this too? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we did. So, I think that's all. Of our, is that all of our movie news for today? Well, I guess there's one more is that um, Ant-Man 3 is reportedly targeting a uh, 2022 release date. <gasps> really? I don't okay, care about awesome. Ant-Man. Stop saying you don't care about Ant-Man. Ant-Man has so much heart to it. Ant-Man sucks. No, he really? doesn't. Yeah, I hate Ant-Man. No, he doesn't. 
Yes, Ant Man is great. Ant Man's dumb. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Oh, oh a lot of Paul yeah, Rudd fans like, like coming for you now. You guys, I like, yo, I like Ant Man. I don't like it. Ant Man is so like. Okay, I'll give it credit. I like Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is like. He has great comedic time and, and like he has good serious like moments, but like the movie overall, I do not care. Like you want to talk about a movie after like Age of Ultron or like after Infinity War that we like don't need? That's like Ant Man one and Ant Man two, and then they did Edgar Wright dirty by not letting him do the first Ant Man movie. I ain't down. Yeah, with I can, okay, that like I can agree to, but everything else in that movie was really was a lot of fun. Not really. It was a fun. It was a heist film. I don't that. Eh. I want to see him more interacting with ants. I don't want to see a freaking heist. He did interact with the ants. I want more don't, ants. Don't you remember hey, Anthony? <laughs> I, want, <laughs> I need more ants. There were so many ants. We need more, damn it. Uh, he was a pivotal role in, uh, in Endgame. Yeah, oh, I did like that. I like him better in like the team-up movies, but when he gets a solo movie... I don't like that. He's like Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, you could put her in an ensemble, but her solo movies are ass. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but yeah, Ant Man, forgettable. Oh, and yeah. one last thing I forgot to say. Uh, but Amy Adams is uh, set to star in the Dear Evan Hansen movie. What? Amy Adams. What's that movie? Dear Evan Hansen. I don't know what that is, no. It's a. It's based on the Broadway musical. I don't know Broadway. Uh, bro, uh, <laughs> Rob, are you a Broadway fan or a musical fan? A little bit. Do you like enjoy some Amy Adams? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm like Mac. I was. I was familiar with that. Are you guys at least some, Amy Adams know, fans? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's Amy, good. Yeah. She just won an Oscar already. She's the new Leonardo DiCaprio. She hasn't won an Oscar, and yeah, and she needs to. I w- I remember like you remember when Kristen Stewart was announced like the actress of the year about a year ago. Wait, wait wasn't that the actress of like the decade? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, actress of the decade. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 that should have been Amy Adams. I think they maybe calculate that word reward on like box office returns. Oh so, yeah. Probably like, but... there's no way in any like alternate universe that Chris Stewart would be freaking actress of the decade. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. They counted all that ah. if that's the case from like Twilight, but something aside from aside from that, if they're talking performance wise, uh it should have been like Amy Adams. But however, I think that uh they also when they gave her that like war recognition, they uh looked at, you know, the indie films that she did. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why, I think, from what I remember hearing. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see Amy Adams if she's going to sing in this because she's really, she's a great singer, especially in like oh, oh, when wow. I saw her. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you, you got to watch the Muppets movie. That I did was really, see that. Yeah. She sang in that. She was really good, especially in the opening song. There's, she has a little, uh, little like moment in the film and, uh, where she sings, and then she sings a couple other times, but uh, she's great in that. But you also can't forget she was uh, an Enchanted. Oh yeah, she was the princess. Yes, I love Enchanted. That was like one of my favorite movies. I was like a young little girl. But it's not better yeah, than the not better than the disaster movie. But that's gonna do it. Then uh, that's gonna do it for the news today. Uh, we left out any news. You can leave us down in the comments below. And also comment down below. What's better, disaster movie or enchanted? We want to know. So stay enchanted. Don't write disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to write that? Think uh, about that. Uh, um, so let's, without further ado, let's move on to a review of a classic '90s film known as The Crow. The critics are unanimous. They're calling The Crow the best movie of its kind since Batman. Four stars. Brandon Lee is sensational, dazzling, and fiercely hypnotic. Brandon Lee, The Crow, rated R, now playing. All right, so before we get into the topic that is physical media and our experiences, you know, like Blockbuster, Circuit City, and KB Toys, if they carried it, um, we asked our guest, Rob, to pick a film, and we would review it. So, Rob, what film did you pick? Because I already said it. 
in uh, our new segment or in the intro. So tell the folks at home what film we will be discussing. We're going to be discussing The Crow from 1994, starring the late, great Brandon Lee in his last uh, film. Nice. 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 So tell tell us a little bit about can you tell us a little bit about the crow and also ask uh, tell audiences uh, why that you decided to pick this. Oh film. yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. Well, about the crow, it's uh, I, I believe it's based on um, James Lavar's, uh character, uh, basically about uh, a movie about revenge and and also a, a supernatural ingredients in the move in the in the movie t- as well. But you know, as it starts off, well, and in the in the film and uh, 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 Hollow's Eve, the day before Halloween, uh, we we see our um, our hero Eric uh, and his uh, fiance uh, celebrating their uh, engagement to each other, and also and and they get uh, interrupted by these thugs, and uh, both when both of them uh, are killed on that night, and sometimes. Uh, a love for each other is so strong that uh, brings Eric back to life to avenge uh, his um, his fiance. It's so great that uh, he goes beyond the grave to to make the wrong things right. And um, we see the uh, in the in the course of the film that uh, you know he uh, uh, just hunts down each of the ones that are responsible. And a uh, beautiful musical uh, music score as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole the the whole film is dark and uh, kind of kind of has like a Blade Runner look to it a little bit. I thought. Mhm. Yeah. Mhm. This is a great film, honestly. Yeah. And uh, why did you decide to pick us uh, to watch it? Because I haven't seen it. Mac, did you see it previously? Yeah, I watched this um, when I was younger, and I did enjoy it. Now, why did you have us watch it today? I think it it it, it resonates. I, I was following his career in the early '90s, Brendan Lee's, and he. You know, he made uh, a few low budget films, but he just just come to light with uh, a showdown in Little Tokyo. He made that one, and also right before the crow, he came out. I, I think it came out in ninety ninety two, I believe. It was, Re- it was Rapid Fire. Mm-hmm. And I go and I, mm-hmm. and I go, boy, this this actor's up and coming. Uh, I had the personality, good looks, uh, martial arts skills, and nothing I've seen in a while. And then when I heard he was filming The Crow, I go, oh boy, you know, he, he, he got picked for that role. And I was I really had my eye on the thing when it was released and the tragic news that that happened to him. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also he landed um, right right after the, right after, um, I think Rapid Fire, he landed a three-picture deal with the 20th Century Fox. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard too, and we never got to see that, unfortunately. But um, the plot, I guess, for the people at home who have not seen The Crow, and I don't know what the hell is wrong with you haven't seen this film, the plot of The yeah. Crow uh, tells the story of Eric Draven, a rock musician who is revived to avenge the rape and murder of his fiance, as well as his own death. It is a like, it's not. I don't know why this film isn't credited with kind of like in like in this movie was released in 1994, so. I don't know why this movie doesn't get brought up in getting the whole superhero kind of like graphic novel movement going. Because, you know, like when mm-hmm. you go to back to the 90s, you think about, oh, yeah, Blade started it and everything and like X-Men in the 2000s. But I feel like The Crow was one of the films that kind of saw like had studios like, wait a minute, this is based on a, a comic book. We can make money off of this. I. I don't think just that, but the way that currently a lot of our favorite superhero films and how dark they, some of them have been wanting to portray, Mm -hmm. I think it stems from The Crow itself and the cult following that it has and, you know, not including the the previous three sequels that were released, you know, it's, uh, it holds a huge part in people's, you know, thoughts when they think about their 90s films and i think about one of the great reasons why this film is so great is that it is such a 90s film and it has that fun actiony kung fu vibe that you know audiences like to see you know Mm -hmm. so now i wasn't around when this was uh you know so rob 
Yeah. Did you so, see this in theaters? Yeah. Did you see yes, it? I, I seen it in theaters. How so? Like how big? Like this? Obvious? Was it like a big release back then? Because it did get a cult following. Did it? Was it like a big deal? Was there any like controversy due to the violence back then? I I think it it drew a little audi- audience um, because. Uh, you know, uh, this everybody knew this was, uh, you know, Brandon Lee's last film, mm-hmm. and uh, I believe they used a, a a body double for uh, the latter half of the filming. Yeah, to complete. Yeah. For those who do not know, uh, Brandon Lee, the only son of famous martial artist Bruce Lee, uh, he died uh, during the filming of The Crow. He was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he got shot by a blank gun when they were filming yeah right. it, there was one of the bullets and something with the dum- dummy cartridges or something like that mm-hmm. it, it sounded like they were just trying to cut an easy way out you okay know, save some money i think from what it sounded like something with the gunpowder or something like that rob are you familiar how the incident happened yeah they, they cut out the whole scene entirely and uh and i saw the uh documentary they had on on shutter uh, mm. Chris films and um, I also I also purchased a copy too uh, of that uh, Blu-ray uh, and, and the, anyway it has the uh, crow in, in there and what happened um, a lot of times when you when you see a film they they show the cylinder of the of the weapon and when it's a revolver mm-hmm. and they show the bullet head and when you see it oh wow it looks loaded and so forth and uh, they say that the film uh, uh, there's an empty cartridge but the bullet wasn't connected to it, so oh, so mishandled. I heard the um, hit the primer of the bullet, and it got and the bullet had di- got dislodged and went into the barrel. Oof. Oh my and, gosh! Yeah, and they were gonna um, film again. And I think nobody um, nobody checked uh, the condition of of the of the gun. Then I went to the actors. And you know he's thinking, uh, you know, the, you know, there's our, there's like a safety coordinator on the set that's going to be okay. And he was told to mm-hmm. aim it at Bruce Lee's uh, abdomen area, and he, everything is staged like the squibs would go off and everything and so forth. You know, simulating a, you know, the the bullet hitting him. And mm-hmm. at that point, it dislodged in the barrel. Then the blank. The actor uh, was supposed to aim at, at him and at him, and the blank had enough powder to catapult that uh, dummy lead uh, round just like a regular bullet, and, and that's what killed him. Jesus. Yeah, and that's insane. Yeah, yeah. And they thought, you know, like then they thought it was odd that he didn't get up after the take, and they and everybody rushed toward him, and you know he was re- he was really injured, and they rushed him to the hospital. That in North Carolina, and uh, yeah, and yeah, he died at the hospital. That's insane. That's crazy, man. And I'm not mistaken. People say that like this film is cursed, like the like, because the there's been like another actor from this movie died. Um, a lot of people don't know that the Yellow Ranger from the original Power Rangers, she was in this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Trudy Trudy Trang, she was in this movie, and then she passed away in 2001. So. People have said that like they shouldn't remake this movie because they said the lead actor may and some of the actors may pass away because they were gonna remake this with uh, Jason Momoa, yeah, but then I heard they about that. they canceled it. Mm-hmm. In yeah, and even Tom Hardy was even like talks to do something in it, and uh, you know, then Brent, uh, then Jason Momoa got attached, and that actually seemed like a fun idea to see Jason Momoa attached to it because I can easily see the similar aspects he would have had with you know. Brandon Lee, but uh, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to put this movie on hold. Yeah, just I don't yeah. know if anyone should touch this movie. So, uh, you know, good idea. But anyways, um, let's talk about the film overall now. Um, or actually, a fun fact I learned is that for the uh, film, I'm not sure if you knew about this, Rob. Um, they used um, what is it called instead of Crows, they used ravens to film the mo- movie. Well, that's, oh, mis- that. that's mismarketing. I want money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it says, I found this uh, uh, Metal Floss did uh, a 18 fascinating facts about the crow, and when I was reading it, and I actually have the article pulled up in front of me, it says, where did my fact go? 
Hold on one second, folks. Uh, where did my fact go? I thought it was really cool because then I was like, you know, I didn't know about this. But apparently crows sleep during the day. Uh, sleep, you know, they're not crows, but uh, ravens, uh, when they sleep, they, uh, they're they usually up at night. And crows, they tend to sleep, you know, at night. And they had to be accustomed to being like, you know, sitting comfortably on, you know, Lee's shoulder and, uh, you know, the ravens fit best. And there's actually, I looked it up, what's the difference between a, a, a raven and a crow? And the two are very different, similar in like wingspan size. Mm-hmm. So and their heads are shaped a little differently. So I was like, I I believed I was watching a crow, you know, <laughs> I didn't you know, know yeah. So, but yeah, look up metal floss. They have they put together a really nice list of eighteen uh, interesting facts. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, but yeah, let's talk about the movie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so this is a it's a good movie. It is a great movie, and I was I'm sad because I he. Brandon Lee had the chops and characteristics to like go for what everybody loves about you know Keanu Reeves about films. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like he was the kind of guy who loves like martial arts films, and I feel like Brandon Lee and if Keanu Reeves got together, they would have been great friends. You know? Oh, definitely. But, oh yeah. Like that's why he, st- he could have been in some of the Raid movies. Yeah, especially oh, like. Yeah. Imagine Brandon Lee to this day as maybe even John Wick. Or maybe in the villain in John Wick. Very true. So, he would have definitely been involved in like because he was only 28 when he passed away, which is really sad. I know, which is really sad because he had, I thought he gave a real, he gave a really good performance in it. Oh, he was good. Wasn't he mostly uh, silent? He was like a silent protagonist mostly to this film when he was the crow. Yeah, he had yeah. some lines. Okay. Like, but, but uh, he had plenty of lines, though. But, like, it was enough to see where his character had enough depth to him and you really cared about him. I mean, uh, I, that's what I liked about his character. And you really got to feel his sympathy and the revenge that he really desired and wanted. And, you know, some of the reasons why I like John Wick, you know, can be seen in, you know, in this film similar to, um, you know, Eric De- Darvin, you know, Brandon Lee's character, you know. But, I don't know uh, if you guys are wrestling fans, but uh, it's obviously to know that Sting got his um, inspiration to for his uh, character of the Crow from the Crow. Because, like, if you, like, WCW back in the day, it was, Rob, did you watch wrestling back in the day? With, like, WCW oh, yeah, and everything? I remember, I remember saying, yeah, I remember yeah. that. You, it was clearly <laughs> obvious to see that where Sting got his inspiration because, you know, the Crow was such a big... Dale that you know 1994 and then things like it's it's you put them side by side you can see the similarities night and oh, day oh yeah yeah the eye makeup the you know everything yeah but like this is the, like I like the style of this movie because it's like it's very it pulls no punches That's yeah I, it does not and I like how his character has like those supernatural powers where the bullet just you see the bullet drive through his hand yeah oh, that was yeah. so that was really sick I was like. This guy is indestructible. I'm like, he needs to be on the Avengers, like, right now. Why? He doesn't even have a... He doesn't even need a suit. He could just go out there, like, almost bare naked and just, you know, save the day. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. The, um, the Crow comic book is actually an independent um, comic book. It's not... It's by C- Caliber Comics, so it's not in, like... It's not Marvel. It's not DC. It's its own thing. Oh, yeah. So it's not tied... That. So it's not tied to anything. So, like, he's... It's up for grabs, but I don't know if you can bring him into like any universe. To be honest with you, no, I, I well, no, but like I'm saying, like if he was, but yeah, Rob, what's now, a, do you got? What, oh, go what, ahead, oh, Rob. What do you what, uh, like? What What do you like about this movie? What like What, what are some things? I, I like the scene, um, uh, kind of like the quieter moments. Remember, um, the police officer that stumbles upon the whole murder scene, or Ernie Hudson. Yeah. And then yeah. Later, later he visits him in his apartment and all that, mm-hmm. and kind of t- kind of kind of fills him to what's going on. Then, then, <clears throat> then uh, he goes, you know, how, uh, he goes like he touches his head, and you see what he saw. Uh, uh, he was he goes, wait a minute, you were there all night and uh, waiting for her to wake up, mm-hmm. her fiance to wake up from the coma. And she was uh, 
uh, assaulted and just dying there and he, and he and he saw the that he was there all night to, you know to get clues or whatever and I thought that was kind of neat too he had that kind of power too where, yeah. where he could see from other people's perspective and all that and mm-hmm. experience the pain and all that the cinematography in this film was like great with like the choir moment you oh, mentioned yeah. some of the cinematography with those like it was perfectly it was like well done and well shot like, uh, even the scenes, were, even like the graphic moments, were even like terrifying, kind of scary to look at, especially yeah. from the perspectives of you know Sarah. It's like wow, like those you know the guys like you know like T Bird and Tintin. I mean, those are awful thug names, but you know, yeah, yeah. Top Dollar, Top Dollar to me sounded like a rap name and not like yeah. a kingpin, you know. Top dollar. Yeah, now that's a. I'm sure that's a rap name somebody somewhere. Shout somebody out has. To, shout out to Tony Todd. He was also in this movie. Yeah, remember? Yeah, as a head henchman. And okay. Yeah. Awesome. Is yeah, this like but... I don't know? Is this a movie that you guys think should be remade, or should they just keep it as it is? Because it did get three sequels. Yeah. Uh, given the fact that I haven't seen the sequels, I cannot say for like you know should this series should have been continued but i think probably in a few years it would be fun to see like at least a new adaptation of it Mm -hmm. but uh i don't think we need it i mean i liked the idea that jason momoa was attached and the idea of the crow was gonna like happened but you know now after seeing how great it is and you know and uh, the problems and how per se cursed it is, and you know, uh, I don't think it's needed as of right now. I'm sure it's eventually going to happen. Some yeah. studios are going to be like, "No, we'll do it," and you know, just you know. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you guys know that a sequel was planned in the '90s with Rob Zombie originally directed? He was going to direct and write it. It was going to be called The Crow 2037. Oh. Why well, should it come out in 2037? Yeah. Rob Zombie in a crow movie. Oh my god. That was He's gonna be, be coming in with a walker, be like, here's the movie Something. that I made oh. in the 90s that was never released. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Rob? Do you think the crow should be touched or should we just leave it be? I think we should leave it be. Um I saw one of the sequels, I think City of Angels. Mm-hmm. Oh god. It was <laughs> You, you, oh, you're, no. not miss, you're not missing. You're not missing anything. I Is this that something one. that Mac and I should invest in time in? No, no. no. He I, he just said no. Yeah, I, I, but, I, like, I is it a re- bad? Is it bad. bad? Oh wait, I just looked up. Iggy pops in it. I don't know who that is. Oh, I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. He just actually he did a collaboration with Kesha. Just a heads up to anybody. <laughs> Singer. Okay. I did not know who he was. Well, I didn't. I don't know. Iggy Pop was still around. Yeah, he's still around, but you know, still rocking and a rolling. I mean, considering it has a twelve percent on Rotten Tomatoes, I think I'm going to avoid this movie. Oh boy, Chris- Kirsten Dunst was in the third one. <laughs> it had a Canadian I television. About that. Yeah, a Canadian television series too. Yeah, it was a short-lived show. <laughs> the Stairway to Heaven. Did you see the. Did you see the television? Oh wait, no, because obviously you're not in Canada, Canada duh. but uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It, it, it ran here too. I think on our local channel, um, Channel Five. I think locally we have a LA Channel Five here, and I think it played on that for a, for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not. I saw a couple of them. It, it, they try to get the flavor right, you know, but it's it's not the same. Yeah. It says on the TV series that there was a special effects explosion went wrong during filming on August 15, 1998, when stuntman oh. Mark Acker's stream was struck on the head and killed by flying debris. Oh, okay, maybe I'm thinking about maybe they should just avoid anything yeah. with the crow. I think the crow, the crow needs to just be leave, left alone. Let it live on in the first movie. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. now the TV series. Now the TV series killed somebody. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. that Me neither. I, I I clicked on it and I just saw oh. accident. And that's what it came up with. Wow. Oh, wow. That's okay, scary. never mind. Let's let's smash the ideas of that ever happening. Maybe Jason Paul <laughs> saw the internet and was like, Yep, don't feel like dying today. Yeah, because people were actually you, I remember people were like telling him it's like do not do this remake because you will most likely die. 
And I, he, he, he said it in an Instagram like video. He said, I'm like, you know, I've listened to all you guys, and it's like, I'm not going to do this with me. And it's like, I'm going to be respectful, and I'm not going to do it. Sure. But uh, out of, uh, I want to start with Rob. What do you give this film out of 10, your rating, as we wrapped up this review? Oh, I, oh, I give it a 10 plus. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> 10 plus. <laughs> How about you, Christian? I give it a, I'm between a 7 and an 8. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe a 7, because... It has some fun. I do like the cinematography. I do like the characters. I do like where it all stems from in so, most of the films that we have today. I do join the performances. Is it cheesy? Yeah, but I think the film is slightly aware of that, knowing that it is a comic book film and knowing what it is adapted for. Yeah. And, you know, it's not, you know, it, it is hammed up a little bit, but there is a lot of joy to be found in it. So actually maybe a 7 out of 10. So I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Oh. Ooh. And a fun, a fact, score. fun fact for you uh, both that uh, the director, Alex Pro, yes, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, went on, he went on to do iRobot, Knowing, and Gods of Egypt. So you know how his career has gone. Yep. I remember uh, Chris Duckman, you know. What saying happened that to this his guy? Gods of Egypt, you know, he was like, uh, what happened? Something happened to him from 1994 to like 2016. Like, what happened? He lost his friend. He lost Brandon Lee. Yeah, because he got nominated. Because, oh my God. Rob, did you see Gods of Egypt? No, I have not. Oh. It's not good. Do not watch that movie. It's the uh, Gerard Butler film. Yeah, Ger- yeah, yeah. I never got around to see that. Knowing's a guilty um, Nicolas Cage film. We have a, for anyone who doesn't know, as maybe you don't know, Rob, but me and Mac have a fun passion for Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh, classic. Knowing's actually not bad. I always confuse it with The Happening. Yeah. That, <laughs> I'm going to say the word, but knowing that there are two are very similar films, but. Uh, the Happening's more funnier. Uh, the happening, I'm sure, is fun as uh, for sure funnier. Classic. Oh, that's yeah. a- <laughs> Did you watch that's the happening, a- Rob? I think I, I I think I have a copy of it somewhere. I think. Oh. <laughs> oh no, we got one person who has a copy of the happening. You paid for M Night Shyamalan's breakfast that year. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, think, I think it came. I think it came in one of those uh, three Don't packs. I think. Three packs? Was it with like uh, last year Bender and like After Earth? No, no. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna, no. I, gotta look, I, I gotta look. They don't want to put the bads with the bad, but it makes sense to put the rest of the bads with the bad. Oh man, classic. So if that's it for the crow, let's move on to the topic, which is physical media. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. All right, so the topic, we're going to do a little something different because we're not, we're talking about movies still, but we're going to talk about a little bit different forms. So since we got the, quote, godfather of the 4K Blu-ray DVD collecting himself, we're going to talk about physical media, the importance of it, and just our experience with collecting and different DVDs and everything. So, like, kind of just a little discussion and everything. So, Rob, tell us about your collecting days and, like, the like you know something like your physical media collection and what you got yeah it's kind of diverse uh i first started with um a vhs back in the day and i don't know what happened to that i was in the uh i moved out and i should have took most of it with me and <laughs> and i kind of didn't uh, unfortunately oh. but um then i i did i did have extensive uh i do have some of my dvds back in the day and Remember those days with with the uh, Circuit City? Remember that? Yeah. Remember that really? Yes. Yes. You know, I think I paid. Oh God, I remember when uh, I had a, I was all thrilled about the new evolution in technology was the DVD player. <laughs> I, I, God, I think I paid like two eighty or something for a player at the time. This is DVD, and this is what happens. When you watch DVD, it's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. The sound is infinitely clearer. It looks and sounds like you're at the movies, but you can experience it at home. 
Not to mention, you can watch it in widescreen, listen to audio commentary, choose from features like director's notes, behind the scenes footage, trailers, and more. Watch a movie right on your computer. And rent or buy DVDs from these great Hollywood studios. DVD. See how good a movie at home can be. With over 3,000 titles to choose from, make sure you see your next movie on DVD. Yeah. Jesus. And I and I and I was I was I went to the uh, Circuit City over there. Ran out. I go here. Look, look. Let me put it down. Let me pay the whole thing. And when you guys <laughs> get what get a player, you just give me a call call back and I'll pick it up and all that. They 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 agreed <laughs> to that. I was so adamant about that and and uh, all thrilled about that and uh, I do and most of what I did was I wish I didn't I sold some of my um, uh, what do you call it my copies of my DVDs and I go gosh I wish I didn't I had a I had a Criterion copy of The Rock on DVD oh wow I got rid of that and I, and I got the Blu-ray and and there's some I regret and then the, my Blu-ray was growing then I, then next uh, evolution in technology came, which was the 4K. Now, do you have a 4K player, or do you just use your deep Blu-ray player? Oh, I, I have a 4K player. Do you love it, or do you like it, or do you define it? It's, like, just the same thing as a Blu-ray? No. And also, uh, what's the, for our audience, what's the difference between a Blu-ray and a 4K player? <laughs> for oh, all the kids that. out there. Oh, yeah. So the, it, it, you're going to see a, a difference in, in picture uh, quality, especially the um, it's it's called 4K because the resolution is almost four times as much as a Blu-ray player, mm -hmm. which is a resolution is, is about 1080p on a on a Blu-ray, and the resolution on a on a 4K is about what 3180, so it's almost four times uh, greater uh, than than a Blu-ray, and and you, you can see it, especially when they a remaster a old film to 4k uh, mm -hmm. standards um i think the one of the best uh, ones that to come out was probably either i have a hard time deciding which one uh it's either 2000 win a space odyssey or apocalypse now oh yeah i'd like the so space if yeah if you're gonna get a 4k just to start out get one of those films or both just you know what just get both <laughs> <laughs> are they more expensive than um blu-ray yeah, a little bit, but they're starting to go down a little bit. Um, and what you, what I what I like to do is like just hunt down, uh, just go to, uh, you know, everywhere. Um, Best mm -hmm. Buy. Sometimes you might see you might see them at uh, a local mom and pop uh, place. And there's there's one in the uh, city of Paramount in California called um, uh, Video Paradiso. And uh, oh yeah, I've, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You could rent you could rent films there at this even now. And and they did they, they did something different. Um uh they you can buy books there now too. Oh wow. Oh cool. And plus they have yeah, uh they mo yeah, they, they still deal with rentals still at this time. Even rentals, now. man. That's I, I wish they were, yeah, I wish they were a little bit closer to me. Um it's I think it's about almost uh, about 15 miles away from me, but I'll, I'll go once okay. in the great while, see what they have on the shelf. Uh, so they have a used, uh, they have a used section, and um, and uh, I found I found some great titles. I mean, like I, I saw, you can get like something like Trivia Seven for ten dollars, and and I wow. the digital cult, the and, and like that one was. I asked it, is this right? And I go, it's not even open. <laughs> well. The owner goes like, well, he wants to get rid of the copies and they're not moving. So sometimes we put them on the use rack. And uh, you, you go to places like that or another another good way is going to your local Goodwill, hunt, hunt down there. That's Classic. Mm -hmm. Man, you freak, you've experienced VHS, DVD players, Blu-ray, and 4K. You've gone through like four generations of like home media. Yeah. Jeez, that is I like... think most of us are experiencing that now too, because I grew up with you know the VHS tapes, because I didn't get a you know a DVD player until like 2005, 2006, you know, until we got for free 
with some kind of TV, you know, and, you know, I was like, yeah, we got a DVD. But for a long time, I was renting VHS tapes. So, like, literally once, you know, you know, the DVD player came out, like, my parents were like, no, we're not paying, you know, X amount of dollars, you know. You know, I wish they were like Rob and be like, oh, I'll put that in because a lot of the movies, you know, that were coming out, I wanted to see when I was a kid were all uh, going on DVD and not VHS anymore, mm-hmm. you know, especially like Finding Nemo, like Finding Nemo. I think maybe it did come out on VHS, but, you know, one of the yeah. um, when I was at the uh, yard sale a few years ago, I did see like it was surprising. There was a the cars was on VHS. A copy of Cars was on VHS. Oh, like, wow. It was on 2006. So I'm like, was this one of the last movies on VHS? Because I like, I mentioned it last night um, when we were on the Scarface watch along. I was like, The Mummy was one of the last film, 10 films printed on VHS. Now on DVD and video. Own the movie with so much action. Time to go! You'll have to watch it again and again. <laughs> the Mummy Returns. Only today on DVD and video. Oh, yeah, you were saying that. I remember that, yeah. I was like, Jesus, like, how many people even... There's a few people that have VHS players, and it's so rare to even find it. I know they're probably expensive now. And, like, DVD players are starting to become, like... Because a lot of game consoles, they have DVD players, or people just don't use DVDs anymore. Because didn't Disney said they're going to stop releasing home media or something like that? that? I, I think what, I, I think their catalog titles they're not going to release. I, I, I believe something like Mulan or something newer. I mm-hmm. still, th- I, I, I think they're gonna do that, uh, but I don't. I think the ca- older titles, like um, maybe like your Toy Story or Pinocchio or something, possibly, they might not do that anymore. Maybe. Oh. But see, like I don't own Toy Story. Like I'm one of those collectors that wants to keep, you know, their favorite films on like physical media, still, right. and get like you know the combo packs. Cause I do go out to the stores and- today and get like combo packs. Of a lot of my favorite, like, you know, films, or if there's like, you know, a watch along that I'm a part of, I will go out and get the Blu ray for it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah. But I miss the fact they're not going to do that. Like, I would love to have a copy of That's the Case of like Toy Story, like on mm-hmm. Blu ray, or even The Little Mermaid, you know. Sometimes you just want to have it just to mm-hmm. own it, you know. Like, mm-hmm. what's your guys' favorite types of DVD? I like the combo packs they have. Do you get, like, multiple films in one? Doing things together, that's what family's all about. Building memories. Like watching movies together, that's become a thing we do now more than ever with Disney Blu-ray. My family cannot believe how real the picture looks and the amazing sound. It feels like you're part of the movie. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy! One of the best things Blu-ray offers is all the fun activities my family can play and explore together. Not to mention Blu-ray discs are kid-proof and more scratch-resistant. Plus, your Blu-ray player plays both Blu-ray discs and all your favorite DVDs. And now there's an even greater value than ever before with the Disney Blu-ray Combo Pack. It includes a DVD so we can share the movie experience on the go, wherever we go. Disney Blu-ray, creating new memories. And now... Look for all these new family favorites on Disney Blu-ray Combo Packs. A great value that includes a DVD copy of the movie. That's my favorite. I like, I know, um, who did it? I think Fox used to do it a lot. Like, if you got, uh, you guys ever seen, uh, was it Treasure Planet, I think? Or, no, Titan AE. Did you guys ever watch Titan AE? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Matt Damon movie, right? Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, um, I forgot who it was. A mm, it was an animated movie. It was actually really good. It was like early two thousand movie, and it yeah, had a combo. It was a early, It was like a combo with um everyone's hero. I'm like, what a weird combo. Like some of the combos are weird, but some of them like made sense. Like they um I like the combos they would have recently. Like they did all three of the Planet of the Apes films, the Matt Reeves films. I did like that one, or like some Disney films they would have like oh here's um like a Mickey Mouse compilation. Of like three di- three discs and everything. I like those combo packs. I love like getting the combo packs that have the you know the Blu-ray, the DVD, and even the like the code to- for a digital copy. Yeah. Classic. Now that's a big thing. People don't like to keep you know the physical codes. Mm-hmm. Rob, are you one of those people that keeps the digital code, or do you give it away to some of your friends, 
or you know fo- people that you follow or followers that you might have or do you just feel like eh, i'm just gonna let it sit in the box i'm great i i think i i think most of them are, are redeemed for me because i i look at i looked that's my last resort as a backup for me that's my backup right there yeah that i agree to that because you know mm-hmm. Knowing that, like, you buy the physical media and knowing the fact that they're eventually going to be extinct at some point, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, because uh, physical media sales are going down each year. They're yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, believe it or not, DVD is still out. I believe DVD is still outselling Blu ray, I believe. Yeah, hmm. I believe it. Oh, yeah, here's the triple one I have. There we go. Now I found it. Now this one is a Fox one. Yeah. The one has the Day After Tomorrow, The mm-hmm. Happening, and that uh, Hayden Christian classic Jumper. <laughs> that's a that's an interesting. The Happening, that is, uh, The Day After Tomorrow, and then Jumper. That's like, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, the combo packs were like, I, okay, who was like, did they just throw out a dartboard? It's like, okay, this pack, we're going to have um, the at Last Airbender. Uh Final Fantasy Spirits Within and um, uh, Osmosis Jones. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they used to come out a lot, especially at Costco. And, and on the right side of the cover, it says, Own the Moment. Yeah, those are classic. I miss, um, I was a cartoon kid growing up, and I liked when um, they used to release the, like, the TV movies on DVD. Especially when it was so scarce when they wouldn't replay them. And they'd be like, Mom, I gotta get the TV movies, I get to get them on a DVD. And oh, like, yeah, I just, I'm... yeah, it was good times for hard. But I guess, like, a big thing with, like, the DVDs is, like, we got to talk about Blockbuster. Oh, yeah. yeah. We all um, went through fu- Blockbuster. Well, fun yeah, fact, yeah. you have? Yeah. For, I didn't get to start going to Blockbuster until, like, I was maybe, like, 10 years old. <laughs> like, I didn't, I went, there was a place where I grew up, and it was called Video Video. <laughs> Video, video. And the, it was like Blockbuster. And every Saturday, like, my dad would take me. And uh, I used to rent, like, for, like, you know, the dollar or two, the Powerpuff Girls all the time. Nice. And so when that closed down, because of the physical media that was coming out constantly and the big blo- and the rage how big Blockbuster was, mm-hmm. I had to start going to Blockbuster, so I didn't start going till like I was about ten years old. So I was a late Blockbuster baby. I was about like five when I started going, or four. Remember Hollywood Video? Yeah, I had one down the road for me. It was so good. I miss like all the video stores and everything. That's where you can find me all too. the VHSs, the DVDs, and that's like. And I don't know if like any where you guys were that they would have like the wall. It was like these are the ones we have coming in soon, and it was like. You would always go in. You're like, oh, do you have the new are the new movies gonna be here soon? Like, yes, I can't wait. Oh yeah. But I always I don't know about physical media besides the blockbuster. But uh, I don't know if anybody else does this. Do you message me if you do. But uh, I still will go to the library, to your local library, and rent mm-hmm. you know physical copies because you know it's free to do. You just have to pay the late fee. You know, yeah. which will happen to like one of those people like me. You know, it's a good way to get still. Hands on copies of physical media. Don't let, don't forget about your local libraries. Oh yeah, so. yeah. I totally forgot. Like the libraries had movies. I just thought books all my life. I'm like, whoa, what's a movie doing here? Yeah, it's a. I rented more movies than books, <laughs> or even an equal yeah. amount. Watch the movies as I read, if that's a fun thing. But uh, yeah, I was a big person on renting movies from my local library and. Uh, you know, still, I'm those kind of people that believes in archiving. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, Rob. So. Yeah, what about the archive? Oh, yeah. So, it, uh. It's a sad thing with, like, um, the whole physical media that people aren't getting it. It's like, it's just like, um, people don't know that this stuff could be worth a lot in the future. And it's pretty, you can reserve it. Like, when Blockbuster was uh, closing, they, um, a lot. I apparently a lot of them were smashing up DVDs and used some old VHSs, and they did not know that they should have been preserving at least some of those older stuff. But they were just taking them out back and smashing them. Apparently, I didn't, oh, I didn't know they're. Yeah, I like, didn't was, know that. That's a good way to you know preserve the physical actual copy of media, because you have museums and restoration programs and and colleges, universities, and studios who like to keep their archives for you know 
it to be preserved properly so right. other generations yeah. can look back and see the technology mm -hmm. especially for scholars like me and uh anybody else that's out there who actually you know rely on like you know getting physical copies of you know materials i mean uh yeah so i believe i'm a hard believer and do you know what was interesting what? uh it's like i started thinking about this more a lot too over the last few years it's crazy even for a the streaming services how now that has taken over everything mm -hmm. yeah because it dies out for oh, like okay. even the electronics because remember like the ipods <laughs> and i didn't i used my ipod religiously i got i, I didn't use like itunes and, and stuff like that like like i used itunes i bought cds and uh you know it's like, you know, knowing that, like, I'm paying for Spotify now and, like, you know, I go out and get, like, CD and download it to my computer and then play it from my iPod. I thought that was the coolest thing, you know, and knowing that I'm paying another streaming service and, you know, you got to worry about having Internet. That's, like, the biggest, you know, thing. I mean, how do you feel about the physical, even media being dying out, Rob and Mac? Oh, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. It's I'm, like, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm buying whatever I can now, um, especially catalog titles when they released. Uh, so if I could, you know, uh, little by little, um, I, I I just pre-ordered the um, a Full Metal Jacket, uh, okay. Beetlejuice, and mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. They're the first time they're, in the, uh, I believe, the first time they're coming out in 4K, and Hocus Pocus is coming out in 4K very shortly. I heard about that. Yeah, I, uh, was... Home Alone. Nice. And um, and the classic um, uh, twenty one and twenty two Jump Street in a double pack. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's fun. It is. It is. I love that movie. So when I saw when I heard the uh, uh, Best Buy is doing the steel book on that, I jumped on that. Oh, and also uh, District Nine is coming to four K. Ooh. And now what I what I realized on those uh, they already um, they already have a four K master. For uh, Elysium, uh, Chappie, and uh, and uh, District Nine, so a lot of Sony titles mm -hmm. are are, are um, have that treatment, the 4K uh, 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 master already. So you just have to pour it over to uh, 4K in, in in the manufacturer. I'm sure it's a you know expensive process, but uh, they already have it already. A lot lot of their films are already uh, mastered in 4K, and you know the, the, then they released the uh, Ghostbusters one and two already. That the mm -hmm. if you if you if you look at the blu your Blu-ray copy, it says mastered and remastered in 4K already. Oh, so nice. yeah. So a lot of uh, Sony does an excellent job in, in restoring uh, uh, classic films. And uh, yeah. no, it's a uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, no, the, what's the, the, go ahead. Good. The best thing about uh, physical media is that, like, uh, I bet you can attest to this, Rob, is that you get some cool collecting collectors edition stuff too, right? Oh yes, you do. Yeah. So my dream thing I always want to get, I want to get the Big Lebowski uh, bowling ball. Um, a DVD like the big the bowling ball it comes like the DVD comes in a bowling ball the big for the big Lebowski oh, yeah I remember that do you have that one no I don't that's no, the one that I... might be like a steel book kind of like edition like how it was probably printed no it's like it comes in a like a hollowed out bowling ball and that's it's like cool. all of it like it's like it's so cool and I was like I saw a picture of it and like I want it so like about Oh, so cool. Do you have anything like that, Rob? Or no, do you just go for like maybe like a steel book or something that comes with like a collectible item? Like for when Gone Girl was released, I was so psyched because uh, the Blu-ray came with, you know, the digital code, obviously, but a book based on the character. Oh, and... I, oh I did get that one. They had it at Target. Yeah, yeah that was exclusive because I was really excited about that because I'm a huge Gone Girl fan. And, like, do you go for something like that? Maybe if they offer, like, a comic book. Like, Target also did a thing with Marvel for Homecoming. They, inside, is, like, a little uh, comic book. Like, do you go for stuff like that? Once in a while, I, I, I would. Or when the, when uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out on uh, on disc and everything, they have the they have a little mini poster with it. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have a, uh, a 45. It actually worked. And um, you know, that and the digital code, and they have a yeah, it looks like a little book too. 
I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. What's it? And they have, yeah, they have a replica of a Mad Magazine. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I got that Mad Magazine. I didn't get the one from Target, that edition from Target, though. I got the Best Buy edition with the steel book. But uh, when I went to go see it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in theaters, they gave me and my friends a copy of the Mad Magazine. And we oh, okay. sat at a restaurant and got to read the magazine. But the no. magazine's cool, though. Yeah, once but, in a yeah. while, like if I really like the film, I'll, I'll, I'll buy. It. And uh, you know what? Uh, I Shout Factory uh, does that a lot too. They yeah. Get both are lithograph, and I mm. I already pre-ordered the um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth uh, a, a uh, Blu-ray set. You'll get the lithograph and the poster. Well, when I heard about that, I jumped on it, and um, I think the first uh, seven thousand will get the lithograph and the poster. And I I, I was lucky. I'm get, I'm getting that. So. If I'm not mistaken. You got the Scarface, the world is your statue, part of your uh, collection too. Oh yeah, me and David, yeah. That is. Also, I forgot. I have, I have a, a lamp too on Scarface. Really nice. I like that. Is, the the statue is just so cool. I love that statue. Now, Mike, and, and, oh, and I have the blue, and I have the Blu-ray release when it first came out on Steelbook. Hmm? I have that one too. Do you have the leg lamp from Christmas Story? No, no. I wish I did. I should have <laughs> bought that. How about you, Christian? Do you have anything that's like physical that's not a poster? Actually, like legit prop? Uh, not so much like prop. Like, I do collect, you know, the Funko figures for some of them. I stopped now because I just have too many. <laughs> but, uh, I do have like, you know, like as in terms of like merch from films that I like. Yeah, I have like so many shirts. In fact, uh, I got like, you know, a friend's t-shirt for my birthday and you know mm -hmm. you know and like i have like a group and you know rocket like stuffed toys and of course i have a stuffed olaf like i have stuff like that and including i still have to this day this is so stinking cheesy but for my birthday when i was turning about 10 years old high school musical was the rage oh, God. shout out to anything Anybody who's or who are my high school musical fans out there, but I have a, a pillow shaped <laughs> like a basketball. Oh my god! And on it, it says "Get your head in the game," and on oh. the back, it says "High School Musical." I still have it to this day, Christ. and I still use it. And you know, uh, I love. I like you know, oh, it's oh. like one of those bean pillows, like. You know, I, I I'm sure I have like I like have like some other things like I have like a copy of West Side Story I think like on vinyl but other than that like but like uh, it's you know I have all sorts of like little kind of things but like that's like first stuff that came came to my mind. So before we end the um topic, I wanted to ask all of us or all the answer. Uh, what is like your guys' most prized physical media? Like what's the one you will never get rid of? You'll always hold on near and dear, like for the rest of time. Oh, that's a good question. Rob, you go first and then Mac and then I'll go. Oh, well, that's a hard one. Mac, oh, yeah. do you know? Um probably well, I had a copy of The Incredibles, but that got stolen when they I got ro robbed when I was younger. So um, it would have been that. If it was, I know, but um, I guess now would probably be like I don't know if I even have one because like there's I don't even, I need to I want to get a shelf for all my DVDs, but like they're all in a box still. But I, I guess like the one I would never give up would have to be a uh, VHS copy of Zulu that I got recently from um, my school's library. They gave it out free, and I like I like Zulu. And I was like, oh, VHS. It was like the like the last VHS I got as of last year. I was like, what? That is cool. Zulu, is that the, is that the film with Michael Caine in there? Yes. And Sean, and Sean Connery, right? Mm-hmm. Like back in the 1960s. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a good insane. choice. I that's insane. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, because it was for free and I saw it right there. I'm like, I'm grabbing that. That's so, cool. But, how about you two? Uh, Rob, are, how do you... Are you still thinking of something or now? Oh, I I I I thought of something now. Yeah, um, yeah, I have a, yeah, I think there's one. It's in DVD still. It's it's uh a copy of Brandon Lee's movie Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you got you got to. I think you could get it. I don't. Know, you probably can get it digitally. I think that, but it's uh, the DVDs. Uh, I think it's out of print at this time. I believe. 
Hmm. But that's it's a good, solid action movie, and um, he plays a, a college student, and he witnesses a murder. Uh-huh. And he befriended Powers Booth plays the uh, like a cop, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. um, and um, a detective, and he's uh, then there's like uh, the Chinese uh, mafia involved, and uh, and the Italian. He's middle of a, a gang war, and he's he's the only witness that saw. Uh, Rick Mancuso uh, murder um, a, a, a Chinese uh, a mafia member, and he gets caught up and and all that. And it's re- really solid action, and it shows a lot of his skill in the movie. Nice, and it, and it shows that you know he has a little sense of humor too. And uh, that's early on, and uh, I think that and I still have that DVD. And uh, yeah, it came out by uh, yeah 20th Century Fox at the time. And, <laughs> And that's where he scored the three picture deal way back in the day. And when I heard about that, a friend a friend of mine called me. Um, I haven't heard from him in years, but mm-hmm. I remember that day, like in in in, in nine, I think uh, in the nineties when he died, and he called me. And he goes, "Hey, did you hear?" I go, "Oh, I go, what are you talking about? You're Brandon about Brandon Lee? What do you mean about Brandon Lee? What are you talking about? Die?" I go, "No way." Dang. For us, it was a big deal, you know, since I'm Asian and, you know, he was mm-hmm. my friend with you and, and I go, it's one of us on the screen. And, and we got that, we got that kind of resurgence a little bit with, with Crazy Rich Asians. So, you know, and um, we, we hope to see more of that. But uh, yeah, he was kind of like, you know, we, we, we were following his, me and my buddies were following his career very closely. And, you know, and he, yeah, when he died, it was just so, so tragic. And, so I, I'm gonna hold that DVD. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of my prized ones, and I still have it. Nice. Okay, it's my turn. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. To this day, only because I grew up with this, but uh, one of my favorite gifts was as a kid was I got gifted the Lizzie McGuire movie. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Nice. The that's Hillary yes. Yes, the hit, the hit Hillary Duff series, you know, film. I got a VHS copy of it, and I dang, I probably, I probably wore that out like crazy, and I loved that movie growing up, and I used to watch it all the time, and I still have the. That's probably like the only one of the only VHS tapes I still have. Like I have a couple of Hillary Duff tapes still, but not. A, as many, but you know that one was like my first Hillary Duff video, and I grew up watching Hillary Duff's career, and you know, uh, you know, she was played a big role in my life, and you know, when I was a kid, and knowing that was like the first VHS tape I got of hers, it was like you know, it rocked my world. So it didn't come with anything special features, but like the film overall played a more huge role in my life. Mm-hmm. So that, and then probably, oh God, what's like one with a lot of good features is probably, uh, it's nothing special, but to me, I love 21 Jump Street, <laughs> the James oh, yeah. Franco, not James yeah. Franco. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jonah Hill, Hill, Jonah Hill and uh, Channing Tatum film. So mm-hmm. that flip movie plays a huge role in my heart too. So it comes with a really great commentary on it of how th- that film was made. So probably that. Uh, so. Fun fact: Lizzie McGuire was the last um, VHS movie I saw at the yard sale. I was like, "What on VHS?" Yeah, yeah why not pick it up? No, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to. So that's gonna do it for the topic today. Leave your comments down below. What is your favorite physical media? And if you could, what would you get from Blockbuster if they decided to reopen now? Oh, so without that's... further ado, let's get into the t- questions.
All right, so questions. If you have any questions for us, you can always leave them down in the comments below. We'll tell, start off with the word question, or you can leave it on our stories below when we post any questions for the podcast, and we will read them out to you. So the first question we got is from our man Flix Talk, or a.k.a. David. He asks, what is your most rare 4K or Blu-ray? And I think this is directed towards you, Rob. So what's your most rare or 4K or Blu-ray that you own? Oh, um, I think the most... I, I believe is the I have a Blade Runner uh, five disc set. Wow, five discs! Wow, <laughs> yeah, Jesus. This one, yeah, this one has like almost like every version of the of the movie conceivable. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it also it's it's kind of strange. It, it's the Blu-ray copy, but it also has DVDs in it. Oh, that's cool. And so like let me let me I have it here. Let's see, this one in Blu-ray has the um. Final Cut. This uh-huh. too is is a, a like a, a special features, a Dangerous Days, Making a Blade Runner, and then this three is the versions of the movie. You have three versions: the, the Universal Theatrical Cut, the International mm-hmm. Theatrical Cut, and the Director's Cut. Oh my gosh! How many cuts of this movie are there? <laughs> yeah, there's like ten million. And there's a uh, and DVD again. This four is Blade Runner. It looks like another special feature: Enhancement Archive. I think it's a Whoa. lot of storyboards. And mm-hmm. disc five is a Blu-ray version of the work print of the film that uh, has unfinished special effects and all that in there. So I, I believe this is out of print. And I have, I think one more comes to mind. Um, a movie called, I don't know if you guys uh, remember this. One. It came out in 80, 1983 with Roy Scheider, Daniel Stern, and Warren Oates called Blue Thunder. Mm-hmm. About a soup tip helicopter they were going to use uh, for surveillance, but they have bigger. Uh, uh, Roy Scheider plays the LAPD uh, helicopter cop and he uncovers their evil plan and all that, what they mm-hmm. have in store for the copter. And there's some, there's some crazy aerial uh, stunts in the movie, which probably they can't, no, they, they, they couldn't repeat it now. They actually fly underneath LA bridges and all this. Some crazy. Jesus. Stuff. Yeah, it's a good. It was a short-lived show, but but check out Blue uh, 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 Blue Thunder if it's on digital or something. But uh, I thought those discs are hard to get. I think, but I think mm. the so the yeah the most rare are those two I have. I believe in my collection. Mm. How are you, Christian? Do you get anything rare? Uh, nothing. I paid like crazy amount. I like to go for like good deals, like you know, like when Best Buy does their like kind of like clearing sales to get rid of some of their old blu-rays to bring in some new stuff oh, yeah. like i got like you know there was one day when i went to go pick up my like one movie that you know i paid like normal like 24 bucks for uh uh but i picked up like movies like aquaman for like 15 12 bucks and that was just like four months after it came out and you know I was like, "Wow, Aquaman! I can get the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray copy, the digital, the digital copy, and the DVD copy." And then I got like the favorite for like ten bucks, which is like the Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz movie and Olivia Coleman movie. And like, I like, like, I will like, like, I can't because I don't have that kind of money to like just pay like, you know, anything extravagant, like, extravagant as much as I like to like. Like kind of like the bowling ball that we were talking about earlier, but like mm-hmm. you know, like I haven't paid anything that was crazy. But normally I will pay like normal rate of like whatever is like the standard twenty four bucks. Yeah, so, so I, I don't have anything either. So next question, uh, <laughs> uh, average the guy who loves movies. He asks, "What has been your favorite movie of twenty twenty so far?" Well, considering that uh, a lot of movies have been delayed or. Uh, that hasn't, you know, been pushed back or I saw in theaters was about like two, three months and then the rest of it has been rentals or old movies. I'm going to start off. I like Invisible Man. I think The Invisible Man has been my favorite movie of the year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rob, you go. Oh, okay. Thought about it. I think um, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with uh, Ben Affleck's movie, uh, The Way Back. I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, that's very, very good. That's yeah, I actually. Saw it, I saw it on theater, and and yeah, 
one of my last memories of the theater. I think. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually the same movie. I uh, I agree. That was that was the last movie I saw in theaters too. I, if I knew Corona, I knew like if Corona was going to happen, I wanted it to be with something you know something that I can take away with. And I took a lot. I took a lot of away with uh, the way way back. Yeah. Excuse me. It was my number one movie of the year so far, but this summer we got Palm Springs starring Andy oh, Samberg, yeah. which was excellent. Uh, probably my favorite movie so far this year. A lot of laughs, good charm, love the time travel aspects. And it was a first time film from a new director and it was a really excellent start to, you know, oh, you know, okay. film, you know. I like the twist at the end. There's a good twist. And, you know, it's a simple comedy and has great performances, good script, and pretty, you know, rememberable. It goes a the lasting impression. So. Hmm. so, yeah, check out Palm Springs, Invisible Man, and The Way Back. The Way Back. So, Christian, you said you had a question, too? Yes, I got one from Aloha Ariana. Shout out to her. She also does some movie stuff and some travel oh. stuff. Uh, kind of cool, mixes it up every once in a while. But she asked, "What, what film uh, gives us nightmares? That gave us mm. nightmares when I was a kid, as a kid, or even to this day, maybe." Oh. Mm. that's a good question. I'm trying to think, just like I don't know, because like nightmares and film. Can it be a film that I watched that was a nightmare to watch? It could be anything. <laughs> I guess. Could it be Gem and the Holograms? Because that gave you a nightmare to watch it. But... Uh, okay. <laughs> like, even growing up when you were a kid, was, it, was there a film that maybe scared you? Oh, I, I, I got it. Sleep? The Purge. The Purge, really? Why? Uh, um, I was, well, I was 13 when the first one came out. And when I watched the trailer, I was like, wait a minute. You're telling me for 12 hours that anything goes and, like... Or I was it twenty? I think it was twenty four hours. No, it was twelve hours because it was from eight o'clock the night before to yeah, eight o'clock 12, in the morning. Twelve, yeah. Yeah, and um, like I think it was less than the movie that scared me, it was more of the mask and like the cover of the DVD just scared the crap out of me, and I just I couldn't the look at it. Was scary. Yeah, it was just the dude in the smiley face. God, it made me uncomfortable, and it, it generally made me like keep up at night. That and World War Z. World War Z, because I like I was the time I didn't like zombies, and World War Z. Even though it was not a good movie, it still kind of scared me. You like that? Yeah. I like that. I didn't like World War Z. World War Z was yeah. dumb. I, I oh. there's some good aspects in World War Z. What was the good aspects, Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. <laughs> I like the direction. Stop, Brad Pitt's a good actor. No, I'm yeah. just saying. I'm like you're gonna say Brad Pitt, and I'm like, okay, yeah, he was good in that, but it's just like. It's funny. I remember Max Brooks was like, "Man, this move the first cut of the movie was good, but it's like it was supposed to be rated R, but then they were like, "Oh man, we, Brad Pitt won't do a rated R movie, so we got to make it a PG-13 movie." He has done rated R movies, so I don't know what Brad Pitt is talking about. I would he want to do a rated R zombie movie. That's stupid. <laughs> I guess he wanted his kids to see it. Probably. I mean, I remember him in 7 and what he, he I think that's when I think Seven is one of his best performances, I think. It was oh, great. yeah, definitely. Yeah. But Nightmares. Oh, I'm, still wait, nightmares. I'm still waiting for the sequel. I'm still waiting for the sequel. Eight. For <laughs> World War Z? I, yeah. I don't know when that's oh, no, they, It got canceled. Yeah, oh, not surprised. Uh, what film gave me Nightmares? Uh, I think when I was younger, maybe Pan's Labyrinth stuff. Like, I didn't see the film oh. really to this day. Mm -hmm. And the thing that the, has the hands with the eyes, mm -hmm. I think that kind of terrifies me. Or anything with the never-ending story with the, yeah. with the really? thing that rides. Like, oh, anything like, the, like that. That white Where dragon. Started, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem that cute to me when I was a kid. and uh, I got a funny story with that movie. Okay, what's up? Um, when I was in middle school, they called everyone. It's like we're gonna watch a movie in the auditorium, and everyone thought it was gonna be like a newer movie. And they're like, "It's gonna." The principal said, "I watched this movie when I was a kid." As soon as she said that, everyone was like, "Boo!" <laughs> 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 
Oh, no! And it, it was never-ending story. And I actually liked the movie, but no one cared about the movie when it was on. Really? Everybody just yeah. talk in their seats and yes. be like, blah, 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 blah. Yes, no one cared about that movie, but I was the only one that was like watching it, and I was actually entertained. That was the greatest thing when you were a kid, when you went to school. You got to watch a video in class, especially yeah. if it was a good movie. We watched that, and we watched Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Which one? Diary, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, okay, we didn't watch that. Uh, fun fact, I took chorus when I was in middle school. Can't sing to this day, so don't ask me to sing. Uh, oh. Yeah. But, however, I do sing on the podcast every once in a while when we're talking music. But uh, my chorus use teacher used to show us uh, Cinderella, the Brandy version, version with uh, Whitney Houston. Oh. And I was so excited. I was the only one who watched that and everybody else would sit and talk. Oh. I was like. Like, I grew up watching that film, too, so knowing we were going to watch that in chorus, I got really excited. But that movie didn't give me nightmares. That movie gave me joy. <laughs> uh, you know, I met Brandy a few years ago. Back really? Then. Really? Where did you Five meet years her? Ago. It was a screening. For, I used to attend a lot of them. A friend of mine got me, like, how to how to attend them, how to how to go on these. Mm-hmm. And, like, oh, yeah. um, and it was a... It was a for I think Haunted House Three, I believe the comedy. I mean two. Was it two? Yeah. Well, did it make three or two? I'm I'm not sure. They just, made two. Just two. two. Okay, so two then. And uh, Cedric the Entertainer was there. He he right. he didn't want to be bothered by anybody. <laughs> I tried I, I tried yelling that. at him. I tried yelling at him, but he kept on moving. He, he's you know, I got to go to my level. I'm sorry. Oh. But Brandy was so nice. She goes, I go, do you mind if I get a selfie with you? She goes, really? I go, I'm not even in the movie. I go, no, I'm <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> she goes, yeah, okay. And, she, uh, and uh, my friend of mine took a picture of both of us. And really Hi. nice. Yeah, ni- nice. Cute. Uh, yeah, nice lady. Very, very down to earth. And some of, some of these, you know, I, I, met, I met quite a few down along the way. And I met, I met Frank Grillo. Oh, for real! Oh, that's fun. He's one. Of, uh, it comes to mind because he's one of the nicest. Believe it or not, he's very quiet. He thanked for me. He, boy, I go. I know you guys waited a while. To, it was for uh, Purge Anarchy, the second mm-hmm. Purge movie. <laughs> it was. It was in downtown LA, and we went. And he knows, like a lot of us, that attend these streets. We gotta wait a little while to get mm-hmm. in. I know you guys. I know you, and it's kind of cold outside. You guys. Uh, you know, you guys gonna be, you're gonna have, you have a good time with this movie, I guarantee. And thank you for waiting and coming down and seeing the movie with us. And it was a nice, it was a nice spread. It was an after party too at Lucky Strike. It's like a bowling alley slash a bar and grill. Woo! Mm. Yeah. Free, of, free of derbs and free beer. Nice. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. Watch down my the buddy bridge. couldn't go, and he goes, "Hey, you, can you attend this thing for me? Because I have an, ex, I have a pass and." I go, and we we started to network a lot, and and uh, but there there I don't do them as well, especially now with COVID. But yeah, the last one I attended was uh, uh, Furious Seven. That must have been fun. Ooh, that did you fun. meet Vin Diesel? Did you say something about family? He like yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't get close to him, but I did I did have a uh, I did meet with uh, I have a selfie with Ludacris. Oh. And I and I. And I have uh, Michelle Rodriguez's autograph and Jason Statham's autograph. Nice. That's fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. We'll have to compare celebrity stories, so. Yeah. We'll yeah. Do. So. But, Rob, what, had, what, 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 oh, go ahead, Christian. I've had a few celebrity instances, but we'll have to compare notes if we got to message each other about it. But, uh, yeah. What has been the craziest celebrity that you met or, like, the best celebrity that you met? Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, I think, yeah, it's probably probably Frank. Believe it or not, probably Frank Grillo is probably the nicest, one of the nicest guys. I like his interviews that he gives. He gives it's really true. nice, pretty good interviews. Yeah, so. he's down he, to earth. Yeah, he doesn't pull any punches in his language <laughs> either. <laughs> if you see his IG, you know, you know, man, he he just, you know, <laughs> about wearing a mask. He goes, you know, don't f up, wear a mask. Yeah, <laughs> I like. I like him. He's cool. 
he's a good actor. He does he not like, get enough credit. No, I, don't think. I liked him in um Captain America: Winter Soldier. He was good. Oh, in me that. too. I was sad when he um he exploded in Civil War. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> he he's actually gonna be in a film with uh, Melissa Leo, and really? it was yeah shot. It was shot during the pandemic. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, it's on his IG. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like a western, isn't it? Something like that. But yeah, he's a cool guy. I think he was also in that uh, movie. I think with uh, what you call Anthony Mackie that came out last year. I think too. On Netflix. Yeah. Oh. I oh, still have yeah. yet to watch it. It's on my watch list. I want to watch it though. So Rob, before we end, what film gives you nightmares? I think what comes to mind. They're pretty close. Um, the Exorcist or the original Omen in 76. Ooh. The Exorcist is really terrifying, especially when that head spins. Oh, yeah. That, like, when, like, that shook, took me off guard. Didn't give me nightmares, but it made me go, okay. I know <laughs> what we're dealing with here. Nice. And, and the kid and the Omen, they cast, they cast him well. He has that look on his face and it's just, a lot of people oh. would a lot of people would be like, The omen, oh man, you didn't see the conjuring. The conjuring was more scarier than the omen. If you hear the music, the score to that, the omen. Oh yeah. That score yeah. is amazing. I, it was I was surprised. That's directed by Richard Donner. Really? <laughs> yeah, really? Lethal Weapon and I did not know that. That. Yeah. Holy crap. I would have never thought of that. Yeah, that, that's his pre stuff and um <laughs> Yeah, like um yeah, I, I like the I like the cast in there. Like Greg, you got you got like a high caliber actor like Gregory Peck. See that that's that's another. If another actor was in that movie, it, it would it would, the premise and all that it it look ridiculous. And you have somebody really serious committed to the role in that. It it could go both ways. The movie could be almost like a almost like a a farce almost, and and you're not going to get that. You know this that crazy, scary feeling when you're watching it and all that. Mm -hmm. When you got a convincing actor, something like Ed Harris or something like Gregory Peck comes to mind, and oh um, man, you can't Gregory Peck, you can't get any better than that. And Liam Remick playing the wife. And, yeah. And unfortunately, got I don't know how you feel about the remake. We don't talk about the remake. I didn't yeah. see the remake. Uh, it's like the 2015 Poltergeist. It was unnecessary. Oh yeah, I saw the 2015 Poltergeist. That was unnecessary. The only good part about the remake for Poltergeist was um, Sam Rockwell. He was just... Uh, I didn't care about his performance in that. It was okay. i never <laughs> seen, I never seen the remake. Oh, yeah, funny you should mention that. I j just got a copy uh, sent to me from Best Buy. They're selling it for 10 bucks. Really? Uh, the original Poltergeist. Hmm. Really? Yeah. The, the, remake, hmm. the remake's not like that good. That's like a film that's like, who asked for this? Who was like, man, who I asked need for a, a Poltergeist remake. Street? Yeah, that's like a film. And they, the bad thing about it is that they were trying to do like shot for shot remakes of like the original film. And you're just oh, like, I didn't know that, really? Yeah, they're like, why are you doing this? Like they did the TV, the clown. And oh, just yeah, like, I saw the advertising for the clown. Uh, what about yeah. the spider in the movie? Remember that spider looking thing? Yeah. They yeah. did that too? Mm hmm. They, it, mm -hmm. It's literally kind of like a, it's, they tried so, they literally tried to do. They tried to pull the the 80s version and tried to make it to the 2010s. It did not work. Yeah, it's like the thing, too. Remember that awful Psycho remake? Oh, uh, yeah. With Vince <laughs> yeah. Vaughn? That was, that it, was a mess. I thought you were going to say you're talking about The Thing 2011. I'm like, I like The Thing 2011. Yeah, The Thing 2011 was pretty good. I liked, yeah, I liked that, too. Yeah. But I said the studio just screwed them over. They just said, oh, the practical effects, no. CGI is the future. I didn't, that, that, when you said that, um, Mag, I didn't know about that. They they switched over to CGI. Yeah, because um, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, that the 2011 thing reboot they did with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, it's a prequel to the original John Carpenter 1980s thing. That they shot it with entirely the practical effects, just like the spirit of the original one. But then, who was the studio of the film? Was it Fox? The Universal, I think. Oh, Universal. They said. Uh, this looks too fake, so they switched it all to CGI. But the CGI looks even worse. It looks yeah. worse. It, it, it looks did. so fake. It did. I don't know. How that movie, I felt like it, I blinked and then it was over. Kind of, yeah. 
But it did. It was a good setup to what we knew in the original movie. Yeah, I'm not I like excited. That twist they had at the end, and and it meets up and it catches up with the original intro oh, with John Carpenter. I love it. I'm not excited for the remake though. I yeah, don't. Yeah. I like that John. I like John Carpenter's of all, but the fact that it's Blumhouse and I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Blumhouse is like I don't people are like man Blumhouse is such a good studio but I'm like if you think about it Blumhouse is Blumhouse has more hit misses than hits. Yeah, they do. Because they throw so little money at things and that's the way it works and they just get a good ROI. Then if you if you think about it, look what they did with Invisible Man. They took their own take on it. That's actually I did like that. I, mean, that's, I, I, that's... I, I I hope they do something like that with the thing. That was wasn't that 20th Century Fox though? Oh wait, no, wait, no, that was Blumhouse. Yeah, now they're gonna oh, do yeah, the Invisible like, Woman with um Elizabeth Banks. Oh, the curse name. Okay. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth Banks. Are they gonna, really they're gonna do that? Yep. Oh, jeez. Oh, she's the one. Um. Oh, I remember she was complaining about uh Charlie. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like to talk about her, I, especially me. I don't like. Her. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen. I like the song from the movie though. It's not a good. Yeah. Movie. The Ariana Grande song? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it has the class, Yeah, my yeah. sister freaked out I when that song came out. <laughs> I haven't seen the I don't, movie. It's not good. No? no. I have it on my it's on private. Hulu, but I just it, didn't watch it. It's on Hulu? Yeah. What? It, I, I don't know. I might... I'm I'm trying to think. Uh, who has some good content on there, right? I, never, I don't have Hulu. They added a Parasite this year. Oh, okay. They're I'm adding thinking. some good stuff lately. Mm-hmm. I have stars that which is going to expire uh, six months. I had a really good deal, twenty five mm-hmm. bucks for six months. Oh wow, nice! It's not too bad. I'm gonna see HBO Max. I'm gonna when I get home from work tonight. Probably gonna. I don't know what the HBO movies tonight, but I don't know. I'm thinking about finishing Birds of Prey again if I can get through that film. Because I tried to do the watch long you were on Christian with Elliot movie files, and I'm oh, like, yeah, I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't watch this movie again. It was just so hard to watch. I don't like Birds of Prey at all. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't like that movie. Oh, I saw, gosh, I saw it, was, I, I saw it in Dolby Cinema, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, have that oh, that's a, nice. I have the, a, I have the AMC A-list. What did we do open? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, what about you? Do you feel comfortable going back into the theaters? If it was, Let's say your town, wherever you are, opened up the theaters. Would you guys go? Uh, if the movie maybe wasn't too long, maybe, but yeah. I don't know yet. I just have to be considerate mm-hmm. to, you know, who I'm sitting with. Like, if I would go by myself, then maybe I would be fine with that. But, uh, I don't want to see something I've already seen. I want to see something new. So, you know, maybe I if I have already see something like New Mutants, then I would go out to see it then. You know, I'm still waiting. I don't think it'll be a while till my state at least opens it up. So, well, that's gonna yeah. wrap it up for us today. Uh, I want to, I want to thank Rob for coming on the show. It was so fun to have you on. Talk about a little something different with the crow and physical media and everything. So, before you, uh, before we wrap it up, you want to tell the people what you have coming up on your page. Sure. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's been, uh, thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate that. And, yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a blast. It was, time just flew by, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just uh, have my Instagram for right now at uh, Big Knock Zero Zero Seven. Anything movie related, I'm gonna try to post more uh, things on there. So you you can catch me on that for right now. Yeah, his links will uh, be down in the description below. And Christian, what do you have coming up on your page? And what do you have coming what? up? Let's see, all sorts of fun stuff is coming up on my page, and uh, including, you know, since I mentioned Lizzie McGuire, I actually ranked the Cheetah Girls films. Oh, so wow, that, that's a throwback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. um, I, I will be, ra- I will be, there will be a post about that, and I got, of course, got some other uh, reviews I have on a list coming up, and you can catch me on here. And on my, my Instagram awesome. at Miss Filmingo and at K Filmingo on Twitter. Fun episode. Thanks for coming out, Rob. Well, thank, thank you guys so for having me. Appreciate it. Awesome. And the link, links, for, links will be down for everyone in the description below. For me, well, coming up, uh, 
next week on the podcast. We have no idea. What, well, we got some ideas, but we don't have anything finalized yet. And for my page, we're probably going to see a review of uh, The Babysitter and the trailer for the new... Oh, we forgot to talk about The Babysitter 2 trailer. Whoops. Oh, well. Oh, so, yeah. Who cares? That movie sucks. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, until oh, no. next, uh, but until next time, I want to say thank you all for listening, and we will see you all when we see you all. Peace. Bye. All right, bye. bye.